Hello and welcome. In this video, we will try to understand a very interesting and important concept with respect to system Verilog UVM and the concept is virtual sequence and virtual sequence. And remember if you are a fresher and you want to learn this concept, if you just pay attention to detail, you will find this concept is a piece of cake to learn. Just you need to pay attention to detail. Before moving to this concept, let me give you why this virtual sequence and virtual sequencer is required, the reason behind it. So if you see the test bench architecture of UVM, you will find that the test has an environment. An environment will have the scoreboard and the coverage collector if needed and multiple agents depending upon the test bench architecture. So if we have multiple agents, there must be multi multiple sequences. Okay. So start those sequences onto the sequencer. It is little tough. Why? Because to starting these sequences onto the sequencer of multiple agents, the test case writer has to provide a complete hierarchical path. So if you can see, the test case writer is, has to provide this hierarchical path, meaning in the run phase of test, he has to write phase dot write objection, phase dot rise objection and phase dot drop objection. In between that, sequence dot start within parenthesis, sequencer we have to provide a complete hierarchical path. Sequencer which is there in the agent of environment. Meaning the sequence if we want to start onto this sequencer, we have to provide a complete hierarchical path. And in some cases, the test case writer and test bench developer are two different peoples. One person is writing a test cases and sequences and is starting those sequences onto the sequencers and one person is developing a test bench architecture. So the test case writer should know this complete hierarchical path. This sequence he has to start onto the sequencer which is there in the agent of environment. He should know the complete hierarchical path meaning he should aware about, about the complete test bench architecture. So here the test case writer is depend upon the test bench developer. And if the test bench has multiple agent, it become little tough. So to avoid this dependency between test case writer and test bench developer, the system Verilog UVM gives a very beautiful concept called virtual sequence and virtual sequence. And by using this concept, the reusability of the test bench will increase. And we can avoid the dependency between test bench writer and test case develop. How we are avoiding this, we will understand that concept. Before moving to that, if we are if this start method, what this start method will do, it will call the body method of sequence. And if you see the body method of sequence in which we are repeating for some number. And in that we are starting item and finishing item. In between that we are randomizing and we are printing. And this body method and the run phase of the driver will execute in parallel. So in the run phase of driver what we are doing in forever begin block. We are saying start item port dot get next item and start item port dot item done. In between that we are writing a task which is driving the stimulus to the DUT. Okay. So this start method will call to the body method of sequence and this body method and run phase of the driver will execute in the parallel. I hope you are aware about the handshaking mechanism between the driver and sequence. So the sequencer is playing a mediator between that. I hope you are aware about it. This concept will help us to understand virtual sequence and virtual sequencer in an easy way. Okay. Now 
after adding the virtual sequence and virtual sequencer in the test bench architecture there is a slight modification in the architecture what is that modification earlier our environment has scoreboard and agent we can have multiple agents okay so here just i am considering a simple example one agent so this environment will add one another component called virtual sequencer and this virtual sequencer will have the pointer of this physical sequencer okay let me show you the code so that you can understand so this virtual sequencer which is extending from your uvm sequencer because this uvm sequencer is a parent for all the sequencer for a normal sequencer or virtual sequencer so it is a parent for all and we are parameterize this with uvm sequence item because this uvm sequence item is common for all the sequencer okay. and here just we are declaring one object for physical sequencer so you can see the object for physical sequencer and except factory registration macro and function new which will expect two argument or wins because it is an object class in the uvm based class array okay. nothing is required okay so this is a piece of code for virtual sequence so if you compare virtual sequencer and normal sequencer class you will find all the things are same just a parameterized thing is different so in normal sequencer we are providing a parameter as a transaction class object while in case of virtual sequencer we are giving uvm sequence item remember this i hope you are aware that uh, the in the uvm based class hierarchy sequence sequencer and driver all these three classes are the parameterized classes okay so in the environment one additional component is added virtual sequencer which has a pointer of this physical sequence and in the connect phase of environment what we are saying the object which is there in the virtual sequencer will point to the physical sequencer object which is there in the agent so after executing this object assignment statement this pointer which is there in the virtual sequencer will point to the physical sequencer which is there in the agent let me show you the connect phase of an environment so this is a environment connect phase in which we are declaring a scoreboard agent and virtual sequencer and we are creating that in the build phase and in the connect phase we are saying that the sequencer object which is there in the virtual sequencer will be pointing to the physical sequencer object which is there in the agent okay and this is an connect connection between analysis port of monitor which is there in the agent with analysis implementation port of this code okay so this after this object assignment statement this pointer which is there in the physical uh, virtual sequencer will point to the physical sequencer object which is there in the agent similar to that earlier the test class has a direct instance of sequence but here after adding the base uh, sorry virtual sequence and virtual sequencer the test class has one additional object called virtual sequence i hope you are aware aware about the difference between sequence and object class in the uvm so as this virtual class virtual sequence class what we are doing we are declaring a virtual sequencer which is an exact replica of this virtual sequencer which is there in the environment and in addition to that we are declaring a sequence object along with one sequencer object physical sequencer object and this m sequencer will be coming here through the inheritance concept how i will show you so these three things we are declaring in a virtual sequence let me show you the virtual sequence code so if you see normal sequence as you know normal in the normal sequence class we are extending this in with the uvm sequence and we are parameterized with the type of transaction class object okay but a virtual sequence class what we are doing we are extending this it with a uvm sequence because this uvm sequence is a parent class for all sequences 
and we are parameterized with UVM sequence item. Remember this difference, okay? And as a part of this virtual sequence, we are declaring three things: virtual sequencer, sequencer object, virtual sequencer object, and base sequence. And as it is a object class, we are registering with object details macro, and its default constructor expecting one argument. Okay. So this is what a uh, virtual sequence class things. Okay. Now this M sequencer we are not declaring. Why? Because we are extending this virtual sequence from UVM sequence, and this UVM sequence is a parent class for all the sequences, and it has the property called M sequencer. And due to that inheritance concept, this M sequencer will be there. So we are not declaring this. We are declaring these three things: virtual sequencer object, sequencer object, and base sequence object. Okay. And in the run phase of test, if you see earlier what we are doing in the run phase of the test before using the virtual sequence and virtual sequencer, we are starting a sequence dot start. Onto the sequencer which is there in the agent of environment, but here just we have to start the virtual sequence onto the virtual sequencer which is there in the environment. So let me show you the diagram so that you understand what we are saying. We are just starting this virtual sequence onto this virtual sequencer which is there in the environment. You can see here starting virtual sequence. on to the virtual sequencer which is there in the environment and as already we have discussed that the start method has to call to the body method of the sequence so here the start method of this sequence will call to the body method of virtual sequence and what in the body method of virtual sequence what we are doing we are doing a dollar cast between virtual sequencer object and m sequencer so before doing this dollar casting this statement will automatically execute the m sequencer which is pointing to the arguments of this start method internally automatically this will happen no need to write this so after this this m sequencer which is pointing to the virtual sequencer object which is there in the environment so after this this is internally done and we are doing a dollar cast between virtual sequencer object this virtual sequencer object and m sequencer so after doing the dollar cast between these two what will happen this virtual sequencer object will point to this m sequencer of this virtual sequence this virtual sequencer object which is there in the virtual sequence will point to the m sequencer which is there in the virtual sequence okay this dollar cast after this dollar cast and after this dollar cast is done what will happen this virtual sequencer which is there in the virtual sequence will be pointing to the virtual sequencer which is there in the environment let me repeat once what happen after this dollar casting between virtual sequencer object and m sequencer the virtual sequencer which is there in the virtual sequence will point to the virtual sequencer which is there in the environment so as you can see this dotted line green dotted line what it means that at the end this virtual sequencer of virtual sequence has one pointer for this physical sequencer this will point to this pointer of virtual sequencer of se environment let me repeat what happen it means that at the end the pointer which is there in the virtual sequencer of virtual sequence will point to the pointer this sequencer pointer which is there in the virtual sequencer of environment so this will point to this virtual sequencer of environment you can see with this blue line okay and after this virtual sequence class what we are doing we are doing two another things we are saying that this sequencer object this sequencer object will be pointing towards the 
sequence or object of this virtual sequence of virtual sequence let me repeat once it's very simple just you need to pay attention to detail what we are seeing this sequence or object which is there in the virtual sequence will point to the sequence or object which is there in the virtual sequence of virtual sequence so after this statement this physic uh, this sequence uh, this sequence or ob object will point to this sequence or object which is there in the virtual sequence of virtual sequence and after that what we are doing just we are starting this base sequence object on this sequ sequencer object which is there in the virtual sequence so just we are starting base sequence dot start on to this sequencer object which is there in the virtual sequence so at the end what will happen we are writing a transaction here this will point to this sequencer object and this sequencer object will point to this sequencer object virtual sequencer object of virtual sequence and this will point virtual sequencer object of virtual sequence will point to the virtual sequencer object of an in binary and by this object assignment statement this sequencer pointer will point to the physical sequencer of an agent so we are generating a transaction here and with this path it will directly drive to this sequencer and this sequencer drive with the help of driver this transaction with the help of driver to the dot with the help of interface and uh, analysis port i hope you know this uh, part how it is driving to the how the driver is getting a sequence from the sequencer and driving to the dot with the help of interface okay so this is what the thing let me show you the uh, base uh, uh, let me show you the virtual sequence class so that you will get a clear picture of this so in a virtual sequence we are declaring three things and we are doing a dollar cast between virtual sequencer object and n sequencer and after that we are writing these two statements the sequencer which is there in the virtual sequencer object will point to the sequencer object which is there in the virtual sequencer of virtual sequence and we are just starting the base sequence object which is there in the virtual sequence onto the sequencer which is there in the virtual sequence okay so with this what will happen the real transaction is generating in this sequence and by this intermediate path it will come here and this sequencer driver get this with sequencer and drive this to the dot so with this i hope you have understood the concept of virtual sequence and virtual sequencer so if you just pay attention to detail you will find this concept is very simple to understand and if you again want to get a more clarification just take one homework what you can do in the environment as here one agent is there you can take two agent or three agent and you can write uh, as per that uh, modification in the virtual sequencer so for example if you are taking two agents it will has uh, it will have two uh, different sequencer so in the virtual sequencer you have to write two more uh, one more sequencer object and similarly here you need to do a little modification here you need to write again a base sequence object and one sequencer object and you have to do a modification so after doing that modification you will get the clear picture so with this i hope you have understood the concept of virtual sequence and virtual sequencer and how it is helping us to reduce the dependency between test case writer and test bench developer so thanks for watching this video thank you